Hello, welcome to Anselm Griffith's occasional series in MATLAB tutorials. Today, as I said, I'm back to MATLAB and uh, watershed segmentation. I have one up already, but I think this might be a little better. So, I've published it uh, rather than run it on the command line, and I've done the table of contents here, so let's just scroll down a little bit. So, we clear the screen, we clear the workspace, we close all figures and just to say that this is not my own work, I took it from Steve Edens on the MATLAB uh, works site and as you know my admiration for Steve is uh, quite large but it might be. he's part of the Gonzales Woods and Edens who produced those image processing books and the MATLAB based one so if you are interested uh, it's an excellent uh, read and very interesting. So. He took this image here, uh, which was of cell nuclei, and uh, by the way, and we displayed it here. By the way, I couldn't get IM credit to work on my machine. Uh, my machine might be a little old or something like that, but it's immaterial here. So we have the picture, we cropped it. Uh, so we took rows 400 to 900, columns 465 to 965, and we just displayed it. So what we want to do is we want to segment out these nuclei. So the first command up we did an adaptive histogram equalization. Uh, well what we did was just go back there a second. There we are. And there's after the adaptive histogram equalization. So in other words, we're sort of taking regions and and we're adapting the histogram to it. So we take a small region and we're adapting the histogram so we get um, uh, low and highs. Uh, I hope that makes sense. It's not too bad. It's a hell of a lot better than it was. There and there. If we just did an ordinary IM adjust we wouldn't get as anywhere near as clear as this now. I mean we're going to get much better than this but the adaptive histogram equalization. We converted it to black and white there with the IM2BW and uh, we're using a grey thresh command so that'll be the threshold value there. If I'm going a little quick I assume you know a little bit this isn't for absolute beginners I assume you know some stuff. So we're taking this figure here and we want to remove any holes so in case you see for instance there there's a few holes of black or just the mouse is pointing there there's a few holes of black or there there's a few holes of black so we want to get rid of them how do we get rid of them? Uh, I am fill there we are proving little by little now there's loads of little specks here, we want to try and get rid of them, little specks there all over the place. So how are we going to get rid of that? An opening, an erosion followed by a dilation. So if we erode those little bits, and then we try and dilate it back, well there's nothing to dilate back, so we have got rid of those little specks. So there's the original, and there's the tidy. No, that's not bad, We're certainly much better than we was. Now we still got these little one or two small ads here, say there and there. We could have got there. I was going to say something else, but no, let's just see can we how do we get rid of them? So BW area open and I didn't put in normally I put in a little bit of help. BW area open forty means get rid of any foreground objects, i.e. white objects, which are less than zero. So I strongly suspect we're going to get rid of that lad, and I'm not too sure about that lad. We'll find that out in a sec. Uh, no change that I can see. That lad is there, and he's still there, so I assume that he's 41 pixels or more. And if we didn't get rid of this lad, it's just there. We're certainly not going to get rid of this guy there. Now, the next thing is we're going to get the perimeter of these objects. So literally we're going to find the perimeter of, say there, so we walk around 
and we will be returned an array which contains the perimeter of that. So there's the perimeter and we're going to use a command called im overlay. Now I've given the credits uh, down later on. Uh, overlay is not uh, an inbuilt function but it's available on the Matwork site. So I'm going to overlay the perimeter on i equalized and what's going on here with point 0.3 red 100% green and uh, point 0.3 blue. So it'll be a fairly green tinge and we're going to stamp the perimeter on the cell. So what does that look like? There we are. And we're stamping the perimeter on i eek and i eek is that lad there. Okay, not too bad so far. Now we want to try and improve these things here a little bit. You know, get rid of rubbish and make them sharper, etc. And do we split these two, etc, etc. So we want to be able to try and mark these. Now, we suspect, say, if I hit this one, that that's one cell there and that's another cell there and when we look at that there that's a watershed now you might know what a watershed is but so okay so there we are so we're going to take that lad there and we're going to try and find extended max so we're going to find the peaks at a distance of 30 and there are the peaks there so if we take there and there just scroll back up a bit they correspond to there and there so we got the peaks so we got that peak and we went in a distance of 30 we got that peak and we went in a distance of 30 around 30 radius I should say and we got those there and we got loads of scrappy little peaks there and there and, and and say there and there and we suspect their noise we'd like to try and get rid of them so how are we going to give them an erosion followed by a dilation yeah exactly so we did a closing and we closed it this way and there's our structuring element which was a 5 by 5 I could have said SE1 equals STREL square whatever but look that's fine there's the tidied up markers and slight criticism we may have left a little spot there a little spot there but look we went with 5 by 5 or I should say Steve Evans went by 5 by 5 perhaps we should have gone with a 6 by 6 but you, you just don't know. Now, in case there, you see there's th that bit of black there inside there, and there's another bit of black inside there. We want to try and uh, fill those bits of black, and we've met this before. I am fill. There we are. Just go back up there. So that big blob there had a bit of black inside it. There's no black inside it. Okay. Now, met BW area open before, so it gets rid of small specs uh, with less than 40 square pixels. So hopefully that'll go this guy, probably. So let's see how we get on. A bit hard to make out, so I'm just leaving it there. Yeah. That little guy there, just above your man there, northwest of him. Yeah, he's gone. So we got rid of those little flecks less than 40. Now you may say, why wasn't it 45? Why wasn't it 35? You just got to pick a value and go with it. Now, uh, I am overlay. There's the full thing. But you, So obviously if you, it won't click and link here, but... If I leave it up slow enough, you'll find I am over there. It's a function I use a lot. It's it's great. Excuse me. So I'm going to overlay 
Ieek. Ieek is way back up here. Ieek is... I have to find out. Ieek is that lad. And... Sorry. Missed it a little bit. So we're going to overlay Ieek with the perimeters or this logical R. The mask. Okay, so the mask EM is there. So we're going to use this logical R to overlay. And the same as before, we're going to get a fairly decent green. So uh, we're stamping. Now what are we doing? We're either stamping the perimeter or, we're st or the peaks we're stamping. So if we just go back to there, we're going, there's a peak. Our cost ones are there, and we also have the perimeter. So that's a logical R, that vertical bar. Okay. Should have seen that somewhere before, you know, in Java or Python or C or wherever. It's all this logical R. Now we want to complement the image. So complement makes white, black, and black, white. So we're going to complement IEEC. And there it is, complement, because we want to detect the watersheds. Now, I have here a bit of help here. I just slow down there about watershed and IM impose min and flood fitting. So I just put in a reconstruction here. You'll see why in a second. A bit hard to explain because in this thing here, but you'll just have to look it up. Now there we are. Uh, you may be wondering what a watershed is. I know I have it down there. If you go to that site there, it's a bit long. But if you go to that site there, do I have it up? Don't. Sorry about that. So if you have it up there, you'll be able to see a uh, watershed elk. It's by the University of Hamburg and from two minutes to four minutes he's a very good explanation about what a watershed is. So we flip that we've, and we think there's going to be a oh, just there there's going to be a watershed. Uh, there's probably a watershed there uh, and are there any other clear watersheds? You know, the one that's very visible to the naked eye. Just where the mouse is there, I suspect there's going to be a watershed. So there, 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 and there are the very clear watersheds. Scroll up a little bit. So I'm going to find um, the impose min. So, you know, in other words, I find in case we, with the watershed, in case we have too many watersheds we have to find markers so we're finding the minimum values and so that's what I am impose min is and there's the impose min so we found them there there's the YouTube uh, video from the University of Heidelberg and then we carried out the watershed on this lad here and there we are there and there we have you know, our, well hopefully the nuclei uh, detected okay so thanks very much for listening bye bye